Good morning, guys. It's my favorite day of the week, Monday. Woo! going to be talking about designing around your content rather than putting your content into a design. Okay, it's time to run some errands. Got to take my sneakers to the sneaker laundry, wash my car, and I got to hit the gym. First up, I've got to get these guys to the sneaker laundry. the car washed, got to go home quick, get changed and uh, hit the gym. That took a little bit longer than expected. So let me elaborate. Okay, I'm gonna quit this here. I don't like the way that I explained my how-to, my lesson, my whatever this week. So I'm gonna try it again. Uh, and this is one of those reasons why I probably shouldn't edit over a week because it means that I second guess myself, I self-edit and then I'm more likely to not even put something out. And if I do put something out, I've probably questioned it a few times. So I'm definitely gonna consider whether I make a movie every day and then I'll decide whether I publish it if I have the time. But yeah, this is one of those problems. I'm gonna correct this though. Okay, so let's re-record what I wanted to explain to you today. One of the most common things I see is that designers will normally start a design by jumping in their favorite program and laying some stuff out and applying the CI. For me, this is a monumental mistake. They're normally going and they're filling up this space, these boxes, so to speak, with content. And it's usually not even real content. It's usually mythical stuff like lorem ipsum where they grab a bunch of latin and they shove it in there and then they go and they get free stock images from the internet and they plonk it in there and then they play around with that for me this is a mistake because this is not the content that your brand wants to put out there so it's not a real representation of what is eventually going to be seen now the stuff that you see out there should tell a story, should represent your brand in a positive way, should communicate and create interest and interaction and give people the function and the tools they need to successfully 
get what they need out of visiting your brand online or on an app. If you're anything like me, most apps look the same because they borrow the phone's functionality and the phone standards, which is a very good way to produce an app. But it can make it pretty boring. Let's be honest, with the invention of material design, most of the internet pretty much looks the same. And that does Google a huge favor, but does a lot less for your brand. I can stand by the functionality that it offers, but when I go and I say, is that visually well designed? I have to question it. The way that I would approach things is to start with the content. Start by saying, what is the message we're trying to communicate? Who's our target audience? What do they want to get out of visiting our site? And how can we make this as easy and efficient as possible for them? So I would start collating all of my content, all of my images, all my videos, all of the text. Now guys, this is a laborious task. This is a huge task to come up with all of the text. I would also go and evaluate what's going on in my social media. Because the truth is, people are accessing your information all over the place. And in social media, you're conforming to the platform that you're working on. But with your website, it's your opportunity to say, now you're in my space. And in my space, this is how I can make this experience better for you. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of value with, with speaking to people where they are, but isn't it nice to have people over? Isn't it nice to have people in your space and people go, you know, I don't go to Instagram for my Apple information. Actually, I go to their website because in their website, I get all the information I need. It's a great experience and it allows me access to their product. And if it's done well, which Apple as an example has done really well, they would then go and fulfill your needs. The approach needs to be content first. Once you have all that content, and I would literally say, go and print all this stuff up, stick it on a wall, start moving it around. You will then come up with your layout. And that way you're gonna have a better site that's more telling the story of your brand than if you had just gone and bought a template or followed the latest design trend or layout and plonked your stuff in there. I stand by sites like Squarespace and buying themes for WordPress and all these other great sites that are making web development easier. I mean, I literally think that these sites have put web designers and developers out of business. But if you're working for a company that's a big brand, those tools, they don't work for, for your company at all. You would, you would normally have a team of developers who can build you anything you like. So why would you limit yourself to a template? On the other hand, if you're a small business, if you're just an individual and you don't know where to start, something like Squarespace, something like WordPress, these are great starter platforms for anybody because it gives you the functionality you need. It gives you some pretty solid layouts, which I mean, pretty much anything that can be done has been done. But even in that scenario, look at your content because if you identify what your needs are, you're gonna choose a better theme to go with your website. Right, a couple of things. Firstly, I put out a vote to say, hey guys, do I do a like vlog every single day or do I do a vlog once a week? And the results were like 70 something percent of people said, hey, do um, the weekly videos. And then I asked everybody to like ask me anything. And I kind of thought it was clear based on the quiz that I'd put just before that, that it would be designer related, given that majority of what I talk about is design. So the results came in. The thing that most people requested is 2020 design trends. I'll do that video 
next week. The second most requested thing is the video that I, I've done today, which is designing around content rather than fitting content into a design. Okay, that's it for this video. My name's Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool. Oh wait, so there is one more thing. I did get some questions. The question that kind of stuck out the most for me was, would you study design in Cape Town or Johannesburg? I'm no authority in, in schools, but I've never studied. I had no formal education. I'm completely self-taught. But I personally, if I had a choice, I would probably study in Cape Town. There's some really great schools. It's got a very small footprint. So living there is pretty easy. The other thing is that it's a very cre like creative environment. Give me a sec. Let me fix this. Okay, that's better. Okay, so if you're saying once you're graduated and you want to do your internship, I would highly recommend that even if you do school in Cape Town, do your internship in Johannesburg. Big business, big clients, all the major brands, all the major companies are all in Joburg. Joburg is where real work happens in this country. It is the financial hub of South Africa, if not Africa. Cool guys, I'm out. <laughs>